Okay, so we have another example. Um, this time we need to make 500 milliliters of a 4% potassium chloride solution by diluting a 5% solution of potassium chloride. Um, and we want to figure out how many milliliters of the 5% potassium chloride solution are needed. So we have to figure out which is our first concentration and volume and which is our second after we've diluted it concentration and volume. So if we look, <coughs> we need to make 500 milliliters. So we want to end up with 500 milliliters. So what that tells me is my second volume needs to be 500 milliliters. So the volume after I've diluted it needs to be 500 milliliters. Um, what else do they tell us? They say of a 4% potassium chloride solution. So we need to make 500, what we want to end up with is 500 milliliters of a 4% potassium chloride solution. So our potassium, our, our concentration when we're done diluting should be 4%. All right, so I, ha I have that. So I, all I need now is my first volume and my first concentration. So what other information do I have? So they tell me we're going to dilute a 5% solution. So we're doing the dilution on a 5% solution. So my first concentration should be 5%. And then <coughs> they ask us how many milliliters of the 5% solution are needed. So my volume that I'm trying to figure out, right, is that first volume. So I'm trying to figure out how much of the first of the how much of the 5% solution do I need to dilute to make a 500 milliliters of a 4% solution. Um, so we're pretty we just we're pretty much done. We've done the hard part uh, picking out the what is the first volume, what is the second volume, what is the um, first concentration, what is the second concentration. The concentrations are actually a little bit easier. If you're diluting something, what happens to the concentration? Does it go up, does it go down, or does it stay the same? Well, if you're adding water, right, the parts, uh, uh, the concentration of that, uh, of what you're diluting is going to go down, right? We're going to have more volume, but the same amount, so the percent is going to go down. So the, the second uh, concentration should be less than the first concentration. All right, so now let's just plug everything into our formula. So if I take uh, V1 times my 5% should equal my V2, my 500 milliliters times my four percent. Okay, and so now I'm just solving for my V1, so I just have to divide on both sides by five percent, and that gets V1 by itself. Okay, and so now I just have to simplify all this. Eeks, it looks terrible, but it's really not that bad, because what happens to the percents, right, they cancel out. Um, I can do the 5 into 500, and it leaves me with 100. And then I have 100 milliliters times 4, which gives me a, we'll write it down here, gives me 400 milliliters when it's all done and said. So I need 400 milliliters of the 5% solution. So how much of the uh, solvent do I need? I need just 100 liters, right, to make up to my 500, or excuse me, 100 milliliters to add to my 400 milliliters to make 500 milliliters. And so that's it. That's how we um, work with these concentrations and volumes of two solutions. All we're doing is exploiting the fact that even though you're diluting the amount, the, while the percent changes and the volume changes, the amount that you have of the, of the sub substance that you have to begin with doesn't change. It stays the same. And we're using the fact that we can get an equivalence um, with that and use, use this equation to solve these types of problems.